Hi, I'm Melinda Tascetta Mullane, Editorial Director of ITN, and we are here at AAPM 2015. And today we are speaking with Dr. Joseph DC, who's the Chair of the Department of Medical Physics at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And here at AAPM, he is presenting his abstract on dose volume relations for late rectal bleeding in 1,001 patients from five prostate cancer cohorts. So welcome, thank you for being here with us, we appreciate it. Thank you for your interest in the study and medical physics in general. Can you tell us a little bit about the study? Yes, so uh, we try to minimize toxicity in radiation therapy. And one of the ways that we do that is by controlling the dose distribution. And in this case, it's for prostate cancer patients. And we try to control the dose distribution to where we have a minimal amount of high dose that spills outside the prostate and strikes the rectum. But it's inevitable that there's some dose that comes outside the prostate and strikes the rectum. And so because of that, we'd like to understand how much dose can the rectum withstand before you get a late complication in radiation therapy and in this case, what we're trying to avoid is having the patient have chronic late rectal bleeding. Now you can treat chronic late rectal bleeding, but it's painful, uncomfortable, and uh, requires medical intervention mm -hmm. to actually treat it. So we've looked at a, a wide variety of very detailed geometrical uh, characteristics of the dose distribution and the patient characteristics their sizes, uh, gender, age, uh, and other characteristics to try to decide what's the difference between a safe dose distribution mm -hmm. regarding this side effect uh, and a risky dose distribution regarding this side effect. And, the, uh, and, and what we are excited about with this study is that we got the cooperation of five different centers who keep high quality data sets. So we have five different centers uh, comprising over 1,000 patients who uh, took part in this uh, research, uh, and uh, we're analyzing all of that data together. Wonderful. Yeah. And, and what is the significance of, of your findings? And so what we're finding is that it's not just the very hottest doses on the rectum that seem to matter. It's also, to some extent, uh, the doses in the more, what we would call the medium dose range. Uh, and so it's not just the very hot spot on the rectum. We also need, as part of our treatment planning process, to reduce the doses in the uh, medium dose range, technically from about 40 grays of radiation on up. And what other conclusions were you able to come to? So. Uh, uh, there, there are interesting geometrical uh, factors uh, that come into play. Uh, if, a, if a person has a relatively short rectum, and, uh, and, and, and rectums do vary in uh, overall uh, size, that makes it riskier for that person to have the same amount of rectum exposed to high dose. Uh, we also have discovered that uh, new technology, IMRT, mm -hmm. has been very protective uh, uh, of this complication, but there's uh, a, a still a little bit of an unsolved puzzle as to exactly why the new dose distributions are so much better. So that's uh, a further step that we hope to uncover by looking at the data in more detail. Great, great. And how will these results help with future studies? So the overall goal of this project, as with other similar projects, is to actually put a, a, what's called a clinical decision support tool in the hands of physicians and treatment planners so that bef as we're deciding between alternative uh, treatment uh, dose distributions, we can, we'll know uh, whether we're getting up there in terms of risk of this complication. Now in some cases, we may need to take on a little bit of risk mm -hmm. in order to give enough dose that's going to get rid of the cancer in the prostate mm -hmm. and just outside of the prostate. But 
uh, we, we hope by putting these, these prediction models directly in the treatment planning systems that there'll be uh, 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 more physicians who eventually use the models uh, and uh, planners that use the models and can then, uh, uh, when, it's, uh, when it's safe regarding what you want to do to uh, irradiate the tumor, they can sort of pull back the dose a little bit and make a difference for the patient to have a lower risk treatment. Is there somewhere people could go if they'd like more information on your research in this study? These are the earliest results being presented uh, by uh, Maria Thor, postdoctoral fellow in our research group, who will be presenting this uh, on Thursday morning here at the meeting. Uh, and we hope to then, shortly thereafter, submit a paper for publication. Uh, so um, hopefully we'll be seeing a publication uh, in the near future. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. We My appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.